Now, it's something many of us really want to not think about, but when it happens to your individual, what happens to your individual savings account or ISA when you die? In his autumn statement, the Chancellor announced a number of changes to ISAs, which will come into force this April, with the final guidelines expected next week. But what are these main changes, and how important are they? Well, to help us answer that, I'm joined by Holly McKay, who's an independent investment expert. Uh, Holly, what exactly is going to change here with the ISA market? Hello. Well, in the past, when someone with ICE has died, uh, the tax benefits effectively died with them. The change we're seeing now is that the surviving spouse or civil partner is actually able now to inherit that ICE allowance. So let's take an example. Let's think imaginatively of a couple, Peter and Jane. Say Peter saved £50,000 into an ICA. I just think of an ICA like, like a tax-efficient see-through pot into which you can put either cash or stocks and shares, and you won't pay tax on the interest or the capital gains tax that they make. So Peter's got £50,000 in an ISA, and say he dies before Jane. Jane now gets the ability to inherit that £50,000 ISA allowance. So from the 6th of April this year, she can get on the phone to Peter's ISA provider and say, Hi, I'm Jane. I've got this £50,000 allowance. I'd like you to transfer that ISA over to me, please. Now... How important are these changes, do you believe? Are they going to revolutionise the market? I don't know about revolutionise, but I think it gets rid of an unfair rule which used to put people off saving into ISAs. We know that about half of all UK adults have got some savings accounts or a few investment products, but this year less than a third of UK adults have taken advantage of any of their ISA allowance. I think people are put off by the jargon and the gobbledygook that goes around ISAs. They think they're more complicated than just tax-efficient savings account and undoubtedly in the past people were cross about they were put off by the fact that when they died the tax benefits died with them. So you mentioned that the spouses will, will benefit, will yeah. other people benefit too? Not at the moment. At the moment this is just for spouses. So if you die, your children, for example, will not be able to inherit the tax benefits of your ISA. I'd love to see this change, but with the general election coming up in May, I think it's on the back burner for now. And we're coming, we're in February right now. Um, these changes are due to come out in April. Uh, are, is the market ready for all these changes? It's very last minute, but I mean, this year the government have made so many changes to the staid old world of sort of pensions and investments. They've given it an adrenaline sort of shot in the arm. I think um, people are frantically working behind the scenes to get ready. I think they'll be ready for this ISA change. My concern is more in the area of pensions. So I would say to people, if they're planning to take advantage of the new pension freedoms, don't assume people will be ready. Get on the phone to your provider on Monday. Ask them the question because it's not a given. They will be ready. Great stuff, Holly. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.